Hi everybody, welcome to Woodworking Wisdom. My name's Colwyn Way and today we're making a rocking and a rolling boat. We've got loads of workshop machinery including the lathe, bandsaw we're going to be using a lot of, sander, uh, pillar drill and dust extraction. So let's have a look and see how these lovely little projects are made. Okay, we want to start by uh, marking out the main body of this first little rocking boat. So we need to find halfway, this is going to be the side of the boat here. So halfway, so we're at 1800 to start with, so there we are, 90, uh, mark your halfway point. So that's given us a good good uh, centre, so we'll do the same on the top face. This is going to be the top of the boat and we want the sides here. We've got a few drill points to put in here. First of all the centre for the main mast, and then we've got three little points here just for the little, um, the little portholes in the side. So I'm going to measure from those, we're going to go another 40 mil from centre. So inch and a half ish and we'll use the the square again none of these you know these measurements aren't precise they're just what I think is going to look right so just mix and match it for your own um, we're going to repeat those on the other side as well because we got the portholes on on both sides of the ship and the idea of this one is just a little rocking boat we're going to do a little pull, pull along boat as well in a minute. So one, two, and three, and then our distance down for those little port holes is going to be thirty mil, so about inch and a quarter. And remember, this is both sides. There we go, and then we need to do the same up here. So our total width of this piece is 75. So we're going to go, I'm just going to even it out a little bit. 75, so 75. So dead centre. I only need one hole at the top. Remember, this is for the mast, and the three on the side are for the little port, little port holes. So let's do this. Oh, do this, and then we we mark out the main shape, and then we can start cutting things. Just making sure they're all the same. I might as well put a little bridle mark in there. Just going to help the drill in a minute. So three holes in the side, each side, one hole in the top, and then again three on the other side. Okay, next we're going to use a set of dividers. So again I'm going to come away from that outside edge. I've decided that we're going to go 70 mil from each end. Now, I don't fill this up with lines. There's no point. You're going to get confused if you do. So I've got 70 mil from that one edge. Then I'm going to come in from this edge, do exactly the same thing. And there's a good reason that I'm doing this. We're then going to use your dividers, and I've worked this out already. That's going to give me my curve for the rock at the bottom. We can take to the bandsaw in a moment. Same on this side. So that's going to give us a nice little curve for the bottom. We'll do the same on the opposite side, so 70, 70. And if it's not a true sort of circle or so true arc sorry at the bottom we're going to sand this in in a minute in a minute so we can um, blend it in nicely at that point just so it rocks because we don't want to flat on the bottom of any sort so we'll blend that in so it rocks nicely there we are i think first of all before we start cutting this shape out we need to uh, think about the holes so we're going to drill the top hole first then we'll turn them over and we'll just drill in these these side ones and the side ones are only going to be there to um, allow us to glue in the dowel um, that we're going to turn on the lathe in a moment. So, over to the drill. 
Okay, so I've preset the, the depth of this hole, which I'm going to have to take off when we do the mass. So just on all three of these side holes, don't have to go in too deep. Take the depth away. I'm going a bit deeper on this one. Okay, so we're just going to cut the curve out. I've purposely put a really narrow blade on the saw um, because there's a few of the, the um, items later on that are going to involve a little bit of intricate cutting. So we're just going to turn, um, cut the curve and then we can sand that round. Okay, so on to the sail. So we're going to scribe a line in a minute. I just need to find centre point. So measurements on this one, 16. So 8 there. Then I'm going to use my dividers. So I've got a little point there already. Let's just position the dividers. Make sure that they go to each side. They do. So again, scribe a curve. This will be cut in half in a minute. I just need to have that that center line. So again, I'm going to mark first through the line that I've chosen as center, then all the way up to the top. And we're going to drill all the way down through this piece for the mast. So I just need to find center. This is an awkward one. So it's about 30, 30. At 33, so we're going to go half. I'm literally, rather than trying to work out half of 33 and trying to squint through these um, aging eyes, what I've done is just move the, the, um, the rule so where 30 is sort of halfway in between, so then I'm using 15. It's a little bit of an easier working for me. It's not overly precise, as long as it looks right. There we are, there's our mark, now we can drill through. We're going to go through with the same drill we've used, obviously, for the mast, um, all the way through. I already know that my pillar drill won't be deep enough to go all the way through this piece. So I'm going to go as far as the pillar drill will let me, and then we're going to go into the vise on the bench and finish off by hand. So again, over to the drill. Okay, so we're going to do the little portholes next. So I've got a piece of oak on here. We're going to make six in total, and they're going to tenon into these holes that we've drilled already. So we're going to have to measure those in a moment. So in preparation for that, we've got the drill bit ready, and I've got a set of calipers, and um, all ready to do the 
The tenons. So let's make a start. I'm going to use a, a bowl gouge to start with, and we'll go through the usual tools, including a parting tool to create these little buttons. Um, and then we can move on to next section. Fairly quick. I'm using a set of um, pendules here to hold this 25 mil square piece, so inch square. And um, we should get all of the portholes out of this one piece. Okay, on to boat two. This is going to be a pull-along boat, like a tugboat style. And we're going to start with the base first. So we've got our pieces sort of prepped and cut out, really. We've got the turrets here. We've got four wheels. This is going to be a pull-along, even though it's a boat. We're going to um, create those wheels on the lathe in a minute. We've got one uh, central stack. Um, and then we've got a couple of um, axles for the, for the underside of the boat. Something that we can put the, um, the wheels through. So if we just move everything out the way bar... The bottom, we're going to find center again, so rule, it's about 75 mil, so it's going to be a rough center. Uh, sorry, about 70 mil, so a rough center of 35, 35, we'll join those up. Just 
straight along that middle section there. Um, and then we're going to create the shape. So we are going to angle the, the front of this boat in as well. Um, so let's get for my dividers and put a slight curve on the back. Oh, that's a bit too small a curve. Let's go bigger than that. There we go. So that's the back. Now the front. Now I've got a piece of timber that we cut off our previous boat that I'm just going to give us a slightly longer curve on the front and that perfectly matches. There we go. Nice long curve on the front. Look at that. Same here. That's the sort of shape that we want. So we can go straight to the bandsaw now. We can cut that shape out, sand it, and also whilst we're doing that, we're going to sand in a very, very slight um, angle to the front. Okay, so we're going to make the top of the boat now. So I was initially going to do this in one section and just do like a little L shape. I've decided to do it separately so we can properly sand both areas, make it a really neat job. So we're going to use the bands on a minute under drip fence to cut a length off. And then I want a bit around about that size from the remainder. So over to the bandsaw. Okay, so we're going to go to the lathe in a minute. We're going to make um, a couple of, of pieces. So we're going to do some little pull-along wheels for this one. Um, as this is a pull um, boat, and we had to, we've had we previously done the rocking boat. So we've got some wheels to make, and we have a little, um, or what we call it, just a, a little grip here so we can attach a string. So um, 
they can pull them along the floor. So two things on the lathe. Be before, we just need to prep these wheels up. These are currently a little bit too big. So I'm going to just center these up roughly and take them down to a certain size. Um, the size is going to be around about 25 mil. Um, I'm going to drill through these first to take the tenon. Sorry, to take the dowel. And then we can hold them between centers to do the actual turning. So, there we go. So, I'm going to just quickly drill those out. If you meet me back on the lathe in a minute. Right, we're at the lathe. So, we've got um, two projects to turn here, well not projects, two items to turn here, the stack and the um, and the wheels, even though there are four wheels. But let's start with the stack. We've already got a tenon that this is going to join into and this is on the top section of the boat. So here and I've set my calipers to the same, um, same diameter as that. So this is going to be fairly small stack but it's going to be tall. So tall in um, length but uh, small in diameter. So I'm going to start Nice and simple, just with a um, bowl gouge. A little bit of speed on here. Then we can get the skew working. tenon. You can of course cut the corners on this before cut, cut the corners off of this before you start. I haven't bothered in this case, so that means I need to go quite quick. Come in from both sides. keep these wheels nice and simple. There we are, that's plenty. And 
So my next job will be just to measure the external diameter of those and do another three. So just in case you didn't see me, I'm measuring the diameter of this wheel and I'm going to transfer that to the others. Okay, so now we need to make the holders for the axle. So we're going to drill through a long piece of timber first and then cut it in half. The reason we're doing that is just to make it easier to hold. You can see here we're, hold, we're using a drill vise to hold it just to keep my fingers out of harm's way. Now we can cut them to size before shaping. You can see the hole running all the way through. So obviously four of those are going to do. and then we're gonna sand them to a nice shape. So we just wanna put a little oval um, or, or radius on one side, and then the flat side is gonna be left to glue onto the base. All four need to be done. Just using the first one, just to mark around it. So using it as a template almost, just to keep them the same. The hole incidentally is around about one mil larger than the dowel that's going through. So just to give it a nice, a nice lot of movement once we actually put the, the axle through. There we are, all four done, and now ready to assemble. Okay, so we're going to cut a couple of pieces down. What I want to do first is just measure and make sure that the axle is enough to go through both wheels and the piece of wood with a little bit left over, just to give ourselves some space. So there we are, this way you need four pairs of hands, so just going to make a mark. And we'll double check this in a minute. And then that can be cut to size, so a little pull saw. One piece, we need two of those, so I'll mark off the other one. Same thing. There we 
are. And whilst we're here, we can put one of the wheels on. So I've made these quite a tight fit. So I'm just going to tap one through till it to go all the way through. And the other one. So it's just a nice flush fit there. May as well just give that a little bit of a, a clean up because a little bit of burr comes through with it. There we are. And so all that's left to do now really is assembly of all of our pieces we've made up. Dab adding a little bit of glue. It, obviously at this stage if you wanted to add some colour this is the stage to do it before you assemble. But we're going to just go with a plain boat here. To make this easier, because these I have to dry on, what we'll do is we're going to put the other wheels on, but to start with, we just need to thread these on. Thread them on, and then we can tap on tap on our other wheel. Next one, same thing, don't forget to thread these on. Up on the other wheel. That's the right way. There we are. Now we can add our glue, position our wheels. All yeah, right. A little bit of glue. course you can dial these on if you wanted. Just going to position them. We're going to set that to one side just for the minute. In the meantime, we can add the glue to the top section. So our stack is pretty good already. So just a little bit of glue in there. Put that on. And then just finally, it's got a nice clean side. So that one there. So we'll give that a few minutes to dry, then we'll come back and we'll assemble the final piece. There we are. So the wheels have had a little bit of time to dry on, so we're just going to the last two bits. So we've got the little pull string here, so that just needs to pop on, and then top of the boat, just a dab of glue. Again, like I said, if you wanted to, you can be a little bit more secure with this. You could add dowels to properly strengthen it on. There we are, it's our little pull-along boat. So there you go everybody, what a lovely couple of projects those were. Don't forget, like I say every single time, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and share us around as much as you can. Until next time everybody, bye-bye.